talking about? What is this? Fake BC comment on your video. Uh, and this is a comment somebody left on YouTube, and I figured we'd address it here. I I, okay. I, 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 I put a response to it, but it, it's a valid question. We were talking about, you remember when we were uh, talking about post windtail and you know, it, it, the idea of at some point in the next two to three cycles, the industry is probably going to begin transitioning over to ARM, uh -huh. uh, which is a good thing. But, uh -huh. the, you know, this person asked a perfectly valid question. You know, so what, am I going to have to rebuy everything for ARM? Is it, am I not going to get a price on? Uh, and that's a, I mean, uh, the answer I gave him, and I don't know if you agree with this or not, was... I honestly think it's going to depend on vendor to vendor. One of the good things is you now have marketplaces. Even Windows is going to have one. So in theory, free updates could be pushed out to you. However, because you're going to run into the same situation you run into where if like if I buy software at Best Buy or Fry's, I didn't buy it from the manufacturer. So I don't necessarily get the free thing. And my experience with software vendors have been when some kind of shift like that happens and the only way for me to keep using their product is to upgrade to the new one. If I bought it direct from them, I call them up, I give them my purchase number, and they're like, in the interest of keeping you on our platform, here's a free upgrade so you can keep with us. Or they, give a, or they basically gave you the new one for the... Uh, for a substantially discounted price. You know, basically they do everything they can in their system to work with you. My thinking is this may be a case where these marketplaces, like is in OS X and is going to be in Windows 8, and so it might get in the way because technically your transaction isn't directly with the software creator. It's with Apple or with Microsoft. In which case, I, 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 ideally, if they can verify you, they can give it to you. But you know what I mean? It, it might create the situation. So honestly, well, here's here's an answer to him. Existing software is the only conundrum we have to we have to worry about. But that has to do with the age of your PC anyway. Let's say so. Fake VC is is saying, look, I've got software. Do I have to repurchase my software? Well, you also have to ask that question. Let's say when you went from XP, like. I did in business, we all went from XP to Windows 7, and, and a lot of the XP software does not run well at all on Windows 7, and we had to buy the uh, newer software that, it, that would work much better with Windows 7. That can happen within the same ecosystem. It can happen when you change the, the binaries, which is going from x86 to a risk environment. So. The, this kind of question, I think, is equal on all fronts, not just exclusive yeah. to to changing binaries. Uh, it could be it can even it can even be a problem between going from 32-bit software and on a 64-bit system. So there's all kinds of variables that I, that that you have to come to terms with in computing when computing itself accelerates and advances far faster than our wallets do. And, <laughs> that's a good way of putting it, actually. You know what I'm so, that, that, you know, that, that's the kind of the kind of a problem. Now, if they're gracious enough, let's say Windows, which is as ideology is very, very much been one that has tried to preserve as much legacy as possible, might do something like uh, an Apple did with Rosetta in, in, in trying to uh, get the difference of uh, what was it? It was running uh, OS nine to. Was it? it was the different uh, OS 9 to uh, OS 10 applications, I think it was, at that time. And then we had universal binaries, which was software that would run on Intel and also the RISC power chip processors. Well, they'd so, run on the power PC. Right? Yeah, power, yeah, the power PC. So basically you could um, be in a circumstance where your legacy software runs on an emulator. And that's provided by the operating system, or you upgrade to the software at a lower cost. That is now universal binary that runs on Intel at that RX86, uh, whether it's AMD or Intel, and uh, the ARM processor. Uh, the way Windows is going about it, I think it is separated recently within a press conference that they will no longer have uh, their legacy software run with Metro, as far as I'm 
focus project. But yeah, they're they're anything. not going to. So, so basically, what does that mean? How many developers will go to Metro, and how many developers will stay with the traditional um, Windows .NET framework in developing? A lot of the programmers and how Microsoft treats those programmers will dictate that software. So it's not so much saying, hey, let's argue architecture versus what will the company do for the software that I like? Will they give me a discount and a premium price? Well, but, but the th that, that, that I, I choose to live in emulate for me. Uh, that, 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 those kinds of questions have to come into play. It's that's very, it's what a I very was complex thing that I think what what the fake PC is is just tying to one variable, which is the architecture and the binary there. That I don't think is so much. A I, I, I I realize these can come up for any reason, mm -hmm. but it, 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 here's the thing to think about: if you really do think this transition is going to happen in the next 24 to 36 months, it's something to keep in mind with any software you buy in the next 12 to 16 months because that might be an issue depending how the thing my honest advice to people would be if you're concerned about possibly having to rebuy it again don't buy it through the Apple marketplace or the Microsoft marketplace it's going to be in Windows 8 unless it's Apple or Microsoft software go direct to the vendor and buy it from them. So your relationship is with them, and if they make a new version of the software that's a different version, not an upgrade or anything like that, you can go back to them and, you know, go, oh, I'm screwed, please do right by me. My experience have been in that situation they tend to, because they want to keep you as a customer. Uh, you know, even... Uh, Usually, you can't install, uh, I mean, I'll give you an atypical scenario. You have to buy a new copy of the software, but they give it to you, like the software's 200 bucks, the upgrade price is 40 bucks. Well, you have no way to install the old version of the software on the new system, but because they can verify your purchase of the old one, they'll go, okay, hold on, I know just how to fix this. I'm going to give you a full key that doesn't require upgrade verification for the $40 price and they make a manual adjustment and do that for you. But if you got it through the marketplace, I don't see how they're going to be able to do that because they won't be able to verify that. You'd have to call Apple, and Apple would, would tell you to call them because Apple doesn't have that authority in the same way as Microsoft. It wouldn't necessarily be either one of them trying to screw you. It would just be, it's a case of there isn't the way to get there from here. Right. Well, I I mean, you're, you're a developer. Do you, have you, yeah. do you have any software that's wound up in any of these marketplaces yet? Yeah. Okay. Not my hardcore. Not my hardcore. Uh, okay, but any of it. Uh, do you? When somebody downloads your software, can you verify who actually downloaded it from the my market? software? Yeah. I don't have software that's downloadable. Uh, I, I, you, you don't have any in the marketplace or anything. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, I don't. I, 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 have, I have been a developer of two iPhone app, iPhone apps, but I only did the back end. I didn't do the front end. I did all the database work for it. Okay. Well, and the mobile's going to be a different animal because you can always redo that. Uh, I, I, however, my advice may be 180 wrong because depending how that runs, uh, you know, maybe getting it through the marketplace may be the only way to get the upgrade. It, it basically you have to guesstimate. <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, it's getting back to his his question. Even even Snow Leopard, I, I'm trying to check now. Will let you know let you try to run Rosetta on there to um, help uh, bring some older applications on. To, to, to running on the current operating system because I'm kind of looking at the Apple support set here. So, but is it a hundred percent? I don't know. I mean, yeah, I haven't tried it. Okay. So, well, and with I an mean, Rosetta, Rosetta was um, what was a way basically to emulate and and bring over applications to uh, the the uh, Intel platform basically. 
Right. So, so. I'm trying to read. I'm reading up the support site here. My, my honest guess is it's going to be 50-50. Half the soft uh, for everybody. You're going to have to rebuy half, and the other half will work with you if yeah, you bought you it. Binary, you could, because I already, we already covered universal binary, which ARM and, and x86 can do it. Max already did that post Rosetta. So um, let me show you here. Can, I don't know. Oh, you can't put this in. See, if you need to install Rosetta, normal applications intended for Mac computers based on PowerPC processors don't work on Macs based on Intel processors. But if you install Rosetta, you can you can use applications in, uh, intended for PowerPC based Macs. So to install Rosetta, and this is for 10.6, no effort. If your computer is connected, it even shows you see using another computer's DVD or CD drive and all sort of crap. So. Uh, so it's, it's basically sense. it's basically uh, like like what Darwine is on on the Mac side for emulating the uh, Windows calls. This is emulating uh, for x86. It's emulating ARM architecture. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. They would have an emulator or or uh, I had confused earlier OS nine uh, going on OS ten, but but. Uh, they, that was that was when uh, that classic I was thinking about before. Um, well, a actually, by bringing up that confusion, you just brought up a very good point, and that is by the Steve Jobs Bible, OS X is at its end of life. But but will Apple obey that? Because if Apple obeys that, and when and if at some future point the next major change they make. They make a change. They're like, we're no longer OS X. This is now the new Apple OS. You know, if they if they if they get off of that, it might be like when you switch from it, OS. OS X is not going anywhere. It is the foundation of iOS. Oh uh, uh, no, I, I don't think it is either. But honestly, what you bring up there is a good thing. If they stay on OS X, Apple will probably offer a transition emulator like that. Yeah, Same thing I, with well, not even that. Quite well. Yes, maybe. That, that's, that's what we're, at, we're, we're answering for this fake PC guy. It just depends on, is he a Windows guy? If he's no, Windows he, guy, a, he asked right here. He said, yeah. he said so should, should we expect to read by Mac App Store apps because they will not be compatible with future oh. R Macs? He's on a Mac. Okay, so he's on a Mac. All right, well, because um, mm -hmm. well, he said post Wintel. Because I mean, we were talking about the idea of them going ARM-based and giving up Intel chips, and well, all right. So if, uh, the iPhone already, all iPhone apps already run on ARM. That's done. Yeah, so, he's talking about the. He's talking uh, about like the, the Mac. Yeah, they would just give you another uh, another um, emulator, which actually the technology is much faster than it was for Rosetta. So, um, and then and then we would go right back to universal binary. Which is no big deal. That means the program runs natively on either binary, uh, and that would be part of Xcode developing. Or and I strongly suspect, as long as Windows stays on the same core, which they have, you know, Vista Seven and Windows Eight are all the same core for the most part. Mm -hmm. As long as they stay that way, I think Windows is going to do the same thing if they make that transition. Windows, Windows is more decisive um, on how it handles software. Uh, uh, no, no, but I'm seeing a big no, change no. as a late on the Windows side of that because you know they're they they are bragging. Uh, this is like their bragging point, even though it's it's completely useless with the UI change they've made for Windows 8. Which let me, let me explain what I'm talking about. Um, Windows is all about, Microsoft is all about legacy and keeping it, but the way they go about it versus Apple is a very different animal. Like their 64-bit operating systems are purely, there's none of this Macophile gateway to say, oh, this is, you know, it, it, it's, you get Windows 64-bit and install the damn thing. 
you know, it, you don't have all of it on one little on, on a kernel that's that's ready to go for 64-bit and 32-bit, and then oh, what are you? Oh, do we need to do PAE? Or uh, no, on on Windows, you get you install Windows 32-bit, or you install Windows 64-bit. That's it. And if you happen to run a Windows 32-bit um, software and you try to install on a 64-bit Windows, it'll it'll put it in the sandbox that is known as Windows running on Windows. <laughs> so uh, uh, that's how Windows goes about it. So um, both companies have proven to support legacy software up to a point. So I think fake PC is probably safe. Uh, I, I'd say they're safe with anything they bought in the last that's, twelve that, months. That's just unfair question, though. I just I don't like the premise of the question that architecture is a problem. Because you can be on the same architecture, same ecosystem, and all of a sudden the operating system changes, as we have seen in with empirical. No, no, I, I, I don't think the intent. I don't think they were implying that architecture was a problem. I think it was just genuinely, are they going to make me buy it again? That I think that was just all they were. That was their only concern. They they weren't even necessarily complaining that that's a problem. They were just like, you know, when like you say, when OSs change, when chips change. Half the time you have to buy everything again, and they're honestly asking, in our opinion, um, do we think they are better off to save their money and wait, or do they do we think they're safe? I think we're both largely agreeing they're probably safe. Don't don't yes. your money's not yes. going to disappear. <laughs> Especially if you're if you, if Fake BC if he's in a business right now that requires software to make money, there shouldn't be any any hesitation in his mind or her mind that they should buy that software immediately because you're making money. It doesn't, that's it. It's there to provide a tool that you need to make money now. There's no one that is waiting or taking an opportunity cost that's too great right now to wait for something that we don't even know about. That's theoretical. Buy the software Captain now. Captain Opportunity, like, Tweety! <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what it is. It's an opportunity cost. I will say that word until everybody is just, it pulls their hair out. I think we already do. I, I, I can honestly feel the hairs jumping out of my head. Am I vulgar, people? It's like... <laughs> uh, I, I, all right, the next... No, no, hold on. The next topic... Stop the show here because that was really dedicated to him. Thank yeah, yeah, and the next topic's going to get along. I'm, I'm going to not only stop it, I'm going to put a place I can, but everybody... Uh, yeah... We apologize for babbling a little bit of me carry on. So it may take us a while to get used to this new format. <laughs>